Hi, I'm Josette Leblanc, energy worker, teacher, and founder of Intuition Immersion School. Thank you so much for being here today. If you're a light worker who's curious about how the energies of July and the beginning of August are going to affect you and how it's going to affect your path and purpose, then you're wanna, gonna wanna stick around for this energy reading. And also, if you enjoy what you hear, please subscribe to my channel or subscribe to my podcast. Today, we're going to be exploring the energy of the Sirius Gateway, the new moon in Cancer, Mercury in Leo, and the beginnings of the Lion's Gate portal. And if all that sounds like confusing jargon to you, don't worry, I'm going to make it as plain as possible in this episode. And also, just so you know, all the dates that I mentioned in this episode and all the resources I refer to are going to be linked in the description. So don't worry about that. If you want to take notes, you can take notes. But everything that you need to keep all that important information is going to be in the description. So before we start, I want to give you a few questions to ponder as you listen to this energy reading. And also, these are questions that you can take with you into the month of July going into August because they are questions that are connected to the energy I'm going to be describing. So the first question we're looking at is, how can I use my voice in a direct creative and playful way. Next question, what choices can I make now so that I become the charioteer of my life? So if you're imagining you're riding a chariot, you're the charioteer. Another way to look at that is how can I use my free will to make choices that align with my path and purpose? And then next question, where in my life can I change fear into creativity? And where in my life am I taking things personally? And how can I use creativity to shift this energy? And then the last question is a new moon question. So what intentions can I set when it comes to overflowing abundance? So in other words, if your cup begins to overflow, where is that overflow going to go? Okay, and this question is going to make sense as I start to describe the energy that we're facing or meeting on July 5th. So on July 5th, we have a cosmic triple whammy. Okay, so the new moon in Cancer is going to be right in the middle of the Sirius gateway. So what's the Sirius gateway? This is when the sun and the fixed star Sirius create a conjunction or when they align. So on July 5th, at the same time, at that same moment, the moon is going to align with the sun, creating a new moon in Cancer. And this will also combine with Sirius being in the heart of the sun, meaning this is the Sirius and Sun Kazemi. This is wild to me that they're all coming together. So when a planet creates an exact conjunction with the sun, this is really an auspicious moment. You've heard me talk about Kazemi energy before. It's an auspicious moment to work with the energy of the planet because at that time, the energy of the planet becomes amplified because of the sun's rays. And this is an important time to declare and align with the energy that you want to manifest in your life. And if you're wondering what energy is that, the best way to look at that is to consider, okay, in what sign is that? So we're here we're working with cancer. And then if you want to look at it personally, you find out where cancer is in your natal chart. And it will tell you what energy is being amplified right now, okay? Now you can do that. It's very simple. I have a 10-minute video that I'm linking here that tells you how to access your natal chart and find what sign or what house that is in. Super easy, not complicated. Check it out. And then you'll know what kind of energy you want to work with or what part of life you are going to be working with during this time, especially during the new moon and the Sirius and Sun conjunction. So to understand more about what energies at play in your life, we need to understand what does the star Sirius represent. So astronomically, Sirius is the brightest star in the sky. This is why it's been historically called the sun behind the sun. It's so bright, right? It's, it has that kind of brightness. And it and this is also why the star Sirius has so much meaning historically, okay? And this is why this is a really powerful moment. July 5th is a really powerful moment. We got two suns, essentially, and the moon in Cancer. And I'm going to tell you more about the moon 
at this point, and it's it's also very auspicious specifically. But a bit more about Sirius. Sirius in ancient Egypt, and I've talked about this before. If you saw my video last year um, talking about the Lionsgate energy, Lionsgate portal 2023, check it out. I got that link too. It It's worth watching because even though the dates have shifted a bit, there's information in there that I probably won't talk about in here. But this is one thing we need to talk about. In ancient Egypt, the rising Sirius in the morning, so before the sun came up, if you saw Sirius, this represented abundance because this corresponded to the flooding of the Nile. And so when the Nile flooded, this means the land became fertile. And when the land became fertile, of course, we have abundance. People started working more. The land started giving crops. And so it was a very abundant time. And because of this correlation, the star Sirius and the flooding of the Nile initiated the beginning of a new year. So you get a do-over. If you feel like the January 1st was not a great new year or even the lunar calendar new year in, in February, you get a do-over right now on July 5th. Actually, it's a little bit later, but we'll get into that later. And another important thing is that Sirius represents the celestial embodiment of Isis, the goddess Isis. So as Sirius, Isis is Sopdet, I think I'm saying that correctly, that's in Egyptian, and Sothis in Greek. So if you ever see those words, know that it's representing Isis. When we saw Sopdet come up, this represented the transformation of the Nile and the transformation of the banks of the Nile. This is a symbol of resurrection, right? The land that was not fertile becomes fertile. This is a resurrection of sorts. But the most mythical story of resurrection connected to Isis is how she resurrected Osiris. Her beloved Osiris had been killed and dismembered by his jealous brother. And through her love and devotion, Isis brings Osiris back to life. And this love is represented every time we see Sirius rising in the morning before the sun. And we can see this specifically. Sirius is seen as lifting Orion from the night sky. Orion is Osiris. Isis is Sirius. And so Sirius seems to be elevating Orion, the resurrection. So this energy of Sirius really is about resurrecting our souls, remembering who we are. Soul resurrection, right? Remembering our soul's wisdom and truth. Sirius also represents abundance of resources. So in whatever way this looks like for you, it could be wealth, health, wisdom. It also represents spiritual expansion and awakening. So becoming aware of the expansiveness of your soul's purpose. It also represents inner growth. So when you work with the new moon in Cancer on July 5th, you're also working with this energy. This is why I asked the question, what intentions can I set when it comes to overflowing abundance? Or in other words, if your cup begins to overflow, where will the overflow go? So new moons are a beautiful time to set intentions. And in this case, it's even more auspicious to set intentions because the moon rules cancer. This means that the moon is at home in cancer. It also happens to be cancer season, which means the sun is in cancer. So there's a lot of cancer energy happening. When, the, when a planet is at home in a sign, the way I see it is it means that the planet is vibing high, right? Similar to when you're at a party with your kind of people versus being at a party with people that don't have the share, that don't share the same perspective. When you're at a party with your people, your energy gets is up and you are connected. So right now the moon and cancer have the same interest. They're together. And the moon symbolizes intuition and emotions. And this is really what cancer symbolizes as well. Cancer also symbolizes home and belonging. And to explore this energy, to give you a little bit more insight on this energy, I was really curious about what this meant because Sirius, the moon, and Cancer on July 5th will be at 14 degrees in Cancer. So to get more insight on this, I wanted to look at what was the gene key that correlated to this. And the gene key, gene keys here, if you want to check it out, I've shared the resource in the description. The gene key that correlates to 14 degrees in Cancer is gene key 
39. I'm going to read some passages here. We're talking about raising our frequency. This is an opportunity during this transit to raise our frequency. One of the simplest ways, one of the simplest ways to raise our frequency is to do what you love in life. If you do what you truly love, you will unleash your creative dynamism. And the more creative you are, the more energy becomes available to you. This is the simple equation that is missed by so many people. This is also the idea of turning to creativity for shifting any negative energy that you're experiencing. Now, it's totally normal to experience negative energy. It's important. When we're looking at the gene keys, we're looking at the shadow aspect of an energy. And then we're also looking at the gift. So every moment in time has these two aspects of shadow and light, shadow and gift. And then really the idea is to work with both to find the gold in the middle. This is the alchemy, right? So Gene Key 39 is called the, ten the tension of transcendence. The gift is dynamism, the shadow is provocation, and the city, which is the ultimate transcendence, is liberation. And liberation comes to us when we transform our shadows into gifts. And this gene key is pointing to us to look at where are we taking things personally? Where are we in fear? And how can we change this and use creativity to help shift this? So this is why I asked you to look at how can you use creativity to change your, the fears you're facing right now? Okay. And so in addition to all this, Mercury just moved into Leo on July 2nd and will be there until July 25th. I believe this is a cosmic hat tip to Lionsgate. Okay, so the origination of Lionsgate, I find quite vague. I was first introduced to this experience as being connected to August 8th, so 8-8. And I still see this as the day, Lionsgate day, from a numero numerological perspective. And this year, this is even going to be more magical because 2024 is an eight year. So we have three eights, August 8, 2024, 888. And just so you know, eight numerologically corresponds to the concept of material wealth and material gain. So I'm going to be creating an episode specifically around the power of eight and Lionsgate. So stay tuned for that. I'm also leading my yearly Lionsgate portal energy healing container. We start on July 22nd for an opening call. It's on Mary Magdalene's feast day. This is also the day that the sun goes into Leo. And if you understand the connection between Mary Magdalene and Isis, then you know why I chose this date. And then I'll be facilitating energy clearings and activations on August 8th. And we'll close the container on August 18th which happens to correspond with the full moon in Aquarius and the Mercury Kazemi in Leo. So once again, Mercury connects us to Lionsgate. So based on my research, what we call Lionsgate is really Sirius's heliacal rising. So again, the experience, the Isis experience when Sirius is visible in the morning before sunrise. And the reason I see Mercury in Leo as a nod to Lionsgate or to Sirius rising is because one thing we know for sure is that all this energy is happening during Leo season. So perhaps this is where Lionsgate gets its name because it's in Leo and in the sign of lion and Leo is the sign of the lion. So that's it. That's why I, that's the connection, Mercury and Leo. Mercury With Mercury and Leo, you get to use your voice in a passionate and creative way. So once again, we have this link to creativity. So you're really going to be exploring your creativity at this time. And so Mercury is the planet of communication and the mind. Leo is a fire sign which values self-expression, pizzazz, and being the center of attention. So this is the energy that is going to be spicing up your voice. So this is it. When Mercury and Leo expect to speak directly about things, you're going to get to the point faster. You might shock yourself if you're not used to that. But understand this is a really good time to just clear the air, clear things up. And it might be especially what you need, especially if you've been noticing that you're 
communication has been more emotional or flowy as a result of Mercury being in Cancer just for the last few weeks. So that's it. Um, I'll be sharing more information about Lionsgate and the Power of Eight in my next video. If you enjoyed what you heard today, please leave me a comment and subscribe. See you.